This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to the video quick tip. In this video, we're taking a look at how to create these nice 2D flat cartoonish looking clouds within After Effects. Now, I know that this looks kind of abstract and by itself, it doesn't really look like clouds, but I think once you kind of add it and composite it into your overall motion design, you know, it might start to sell the kind of cloud look, right? So this is a pretty interesting way to kind of create clouds if you're not really focused too much on it. And I first saw this type of design on the Curse Gazette kind of YouTube channel right here. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've just butchered that channel name here. But basically, they're a pretty big YouTube channel that covers a lot of interesting, you know, random 3 a.m. thoughts type of video topics. And so aside from their interesting topics, they also have very, very beautiful type motion graphics and animation within their video. And so in a lot of their videos, they have sort of this kind of 2D flat cloud look right here. Um, so kind of like rounded rectangles, very simple abstract um, type things. So if you really want to see this kind of abstract cloud in work, um, definitely check out this YouTube channel right here. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, they have some pretty awesome stuff. You can kind of see kind of how the clouds look because it's pretty obvious in a lot of their animation and their style right here. And if you're interested in how they created these animations, they have a Skillshare course by one of their animators. Um, kind of walking you through kind of how to create motion graphics in general and their workflow and the fundamentals of animation in this Skillshare course right here. So check it out. All the links will be in, in the description down below. Also, I'm not sure if this company right here, Gigantic, is associated with any of those info kind of type YouTube channels, but basically they have very, very similar styles. So this background kind of has that, that rounded rectangle look right here. Um, this kind of planet-esque thing has kind of like the same cloud type atmosphere type rounded um, rectangle stuff. Um, the animation and the characters look very, very similar to the video, so I assume they're associated somehow. Uh, but if not, this is also a really fantastic site to kind of see um, what I'm talking about. They also sell a lot of really interesting stuff right here. So um, this website right here, Gigantic Store, they sell a lot of like interesting like color palettes, um, grain brushes, um, characters from Illustrator. So if you suck at designing characters for character animations, um, definitely check out some of their characters. You can kind of build your own characters this way. Um, all sorts of really interesting tools for the motion designer right here. So definitely check them out. They're kind of under underrated here. Um, so yeah, so basically we're gonna be, be creating kind of what they kind of created in After Effects. And it's a pretty simple process here. So I'm gonna start with the very, very beginning. By the way, this is another original example. I created this for my previous tutorial on oscillating movements. So if you haven't seen the tutorial yet, check that video tutorial out. But I use the same kind of technique for the clouds as well as the reflection right here, um, or I guess shadow for the boat and the water. So you can use this technique for a lot of things like trailing smoke for cars or chimneys or what have you. Um, so basically at the fundamental level, right? We have a rounded rectangle. This is just a shape layer with a rectangle that's rounded. So they increase the roundness to like 400 or so. And if you want, you can also add in a um, rounded corners effect right here to kind of increase that roundness. But basically we have this basic rounded rectangle, easy enough with a fill I added with a white fill, right? So on top of that, I also added a repeater. So a repeater, if you add that in, it's basically, it's just going to repeat um, your shape layers. And this is kind of the downside of shape layers and After Effects. Uh, uh, the shape properties haven't really been updated at all for centuries. Um, so you don't have that much control in the repeaters. Um, but basically we can define how many copies we want. So as you can see, you can kind of increase the number of copies. I find that three or four is kind of the hot spot for me anyways. So copy set to four. And then we can go to the transform of the repeater and kind of like play around with the distribution, right? So we can change the position to like 200 and it's gonna offset all the copies by like 200 pixels to the right or whatever. And you know, shift everything down by hundred pixels or whatever. So this is effectively what I'm doing here. Just kind of creating like an offset of my repeaters. And I wish we had more control um, kind of over this stuff right here. And you can play around with the scale to kind of add that tapering effect or you know, vice versa, pancake effect or whatever. Um, tons of options here. So the repeater is just to add more copies of my rectangle. And then, you know, right now it looks kind of like crap. I added another wiggle, right? And I set this wiggles per second to zero because I'm not gonna use this wiggle transform to really add any animation. I'm not trying to wiggle 
an animation. I'm trying to just displace everything randomly, right? So I'm adding a wiggle transform and you can do this by adding another parameter right here, wiggle transform, um, turn it off. So wiggle seconds to zero. And, and then I went to the transform of that and just kind of play around with the X axis, right? So by playing around with the wiggle transform, you're just pretty much offsetting and randomizing the position um, of your little cloud thing right here. And then finally, I wanted to add some sort of animation. Um, so the quickest way to do that is to add another wiggle transform, turn it on. This time, we're not gonna completely turn off the wiggles per second. We're going to keep it at a low number like 0.1 or 0.2. I'll set it to like 0.25 so you can kind of see what's going on right here. And under that, under the transformer of that wiggle transform, I'm gonna set the position to like 300 or so. And so basically what you have now is a single rectangle that's repeated, that's displaced randomly based on our first wiggle transform. And then our second wiggle transform is actually doing the wiggling animation itself. And it's wiggling in the X axis right here, right? So that's what's happening. If you want to make it wiggle on the Y axis, you can do that too by shifting the position of the wiggle transform. Um, but you know, this is what we have. So a bunch of wiggling, small little rounded rectangles, just kind of doing its thing. And so basically the whole secret to this thing is the matte choker effect, right? So in my effects stack, I have a levels set to alpha and this really serves no purpose. But if, you, if you're doing something with like a feathered edge or whatever like that, you can kind of crush it, crush the levels and kind of play with the alpha or whatever. Um, so you don't necessarily need the levels. I have that in there for my sake. The key here is the matte choker effect. So if you search up um, the matte choker effect, you can see, you can apply it on. And as you can see, it just chokes the whole entire shape, right? And it gives you that rounded, that rounded look that you're looking for. And so basically you're gonna play around with the softness. I usually crank up the choke one to the max, 127. And then play around with the softness. And so basically if you set this to zero, it's nothing. Um, but if you crank it up, it's going to choke it even more, choke it even more and make things a little bit more soft. And how much you want to turn this up depends on the size of your clouds, right? So if your clouds are like really, really big, you might need to crank this up even more to get kind of like the even look that you have. Um, but these are pretty small. So I can, you know, leave it at 17 or whatever. I added another pass here. And then, so by doing that, you kind of get the, the look that you're going for. Um, if you look really closely, you get this nasty artifact thing, some black haloing around the edges. And so to fix that, a shortcut is just to add another simple choker, right? This is just a simple choker. It's going to choke the edges by very, very little. I did five. And so that just kind of cleans up the edges, makes it a little bit softer, and just kind of gets rid of the black halo around your cloud. Just like that, you kind of have this kind of oscillating cloud right here. And as you can see, it's moving like crazy because we kind of increased the wiggles too much um, for the demonstration. Um, but just like that, you kind of created that cloud. Now, is it as beautiful as um, the YouTube channel that I just showed you? I mean, no, um, they probably designed it in Illustrator, I assume, and kind of just imported it in. Um, so, you know, this is kind of like a cheap shortcut on how to do that. Um, some ways to improve this is actually is to make it more mathematically correct. So. In the original demonstration, I believe like the gap, the spacing right here, the negative space is equal to the, the, the height of the actual cloud itself. So if this is like 100 pixels, the gap should be 100 pixels. But in this case, it's not, as you can see. Um, the gaps are not very accurate um, and things are not really even. It looks more asymmetrical, have you. Um, but you know, this is kind of like a quick shortcut on how to create that. And of course you can play around with it and kind of add your own tweak to it and customize it. And it should look, you know, relatively okay. Um, especially if it's just like a background element like clouds. Um, so the great part is I actually created this as a preset, a custom preset for you guys, um, right here called cloud maker. Um, so you can download it on the creative dojo website. It's under the creative dojo preset pack. So basically it's a collection of all my presets that I've ever created kind of into one big pack right there. Um, it's a name your own price kind of product. So if you want to pay zero dollars and get it for free, you can definitely get all my presets for free. Um, no big deal. If you want to donate whatever, feel free to donate whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, but it, you know, it is available. Just hit zero dollars if you want to get it for free. Um, but basically how it works is you're going to go ahead and make sure that nothing is selected. 
Um, a lot of times people have like a layer selected or whatever. Make sure nothing is selected and just go ahead. And once you install it in your effects and presets, um, you should find it in the Creative Dojo folder. If not, search for it. Um, but once you install it correctly, just go ahead and double click. It's going to go ahead and recreate the shape for you and apply all the effect stacks on there for you. And so you kind of have like a base cloud right here, right? And here you can control like the number of segments. So we can just look to like four or so. We can increase the size in X to make you know larger clouds. We can increase the size in Y to make skinnier clouds. And of course you have to adjust everything um, when you do that. Um, the distribution is the offset per clone, which we talked about earlier. So pretty handy there. You have the randomized distribution in X and Y, so you can kind of add more randomness to your clouds this way. Um, and then you have the roundness, which is usually 200 is okay. And then we have tapering, right? So you change the scale of it, you can kind of create like a, a different type of look, maybe for like a chimney, let's say you have like a house or something like that. Down here, you want to create kind of like a chimney smoke. You would definitely need to increase the number of segments to like, I don't know, like eight or so, play around with the distribution so it's tighter. And then kind of create like your, kind of like your smoke right here. So of course it looks kind of terrible. You need to go around play around with the actual, uh, the choker itself. Uh, but you kind of get the idea how you can kind of create like a train trail or whatever. And of course you have the animation tab right here, which is basically just the wiggle. So we can add a little bit of wiggling. And by default, you're gonna be wiggling once a second and shifting about five frames or five pixels. Uh, so it's a very, very soft wiggle, very, very subtle wiggle, but of course you can always go back in here and um, change that. So, you know, I'm always looking for ways to kind of improve this. Um, by the time you're watching this, I'll probably have modified this Cloud Maker preset even a little bit for you guys here. But this is pretty much the Cloud Maker preset from creativedojo.net, part of the Dojo preset pack, name your own price product, um, not a paid product. Um, so hopefully this kind of gives you ideas on how to kind of create abstract clouds. Before I go, I want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have awesome themes to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support. And best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the DOJO. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash DOJO. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much it for this quick tip, guys. Hopefully this was very helpful for you guys. Um, another quick tip, if you wanted to add more clouds to your scene, just go ahead and go to the contents right here and just go ahead and just like duplicate the clouds, right? So you can duplicate it, you know, offset it somewhere and you know, you can play around with the segments and randomization, just kind of add your own clouds right here. Um, right now, there's not an easy way to actually clone a lot of these things, uh, but I'll look into ways to kind of how to do that um, effectively here. But again, this is another quick tip from thecreativedojo.net. My name is Vincent, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.